We're going to now move to the Santa Monica College and their project, which is called Altered District. Here, the focus is the Garment District in downtown LA, where they've actually designed architectural prototypes for healthier and more sustainable work environments for this predominantly immigrant workforce. David Gonzalez Rojas is the team lead, and David, uh, eager to hear more. So uh, yeah, we're in Santa Monica College and our team members are uh, the students. Uh, we had about 12 students participating as well as our sustainability design consultant that helped us, Olga, and uh, our community partner, which was the Garment Workers Center. Um, and there was a organizer, Nayantara, um, who was very helpful. Um, and here's a photo of our uh, team uh, when we went on the uh, site visit. Um, so we're too busy working on this to get a picture of all of us where you can see all of us. But um, the garment workers uh, of the fashion district in downtown Los Angeles are mostly Latino and Asian immigrants who have been fighting for better working conditions for decades, such as ventilation, daylighting, and just wages. And now the threat of gentrification with the planning department's newly approved zoning plan. Uh, this project envisions building design solutions for these and other environmentally related problems, seeking to preserve the fashion district as a manufacturing hub while simultaneously making the district more livable, accessible, equitable, and ecologically responsible. Uh, we noticed that there's a, an entire uh, ecosystem um, related to garment work um, in these few blocks in the fashion district, um, and they involve um, the garment workers themselves, as well as the designer studios, uh, the employers of the garment workers, which are called contractors, who, who are the ones who have the direct contracts with the brands. Um, these contractors have leases on factory spaces. Um, there's tool rental shops, like sewing machine shops. Um, there's freight elevators. There's actual physical um, alterations and modifications that have been done on the site uh, to make this place uh, work um, for garment workers. And it all happens in, a, in this kind of tight nucleus um, in these blocks. Um, and it's been de developing that way for decades. Um, over half of the nation's apparel manufacturing jobs are actually here in Los Angeles um, with 45,000 garment workers uh, making up the city's second largest industry, only behind uh, motion pictures, so like film and TV. Um, but the difference is that the cut and sew industry is hidden um, with its largely undocumented workforce exploited and exposed to poor health and safety conditions. Uh, on top of that, um, today the city planning department is pushing forward a plan that allows for more luxury housing within the district. And they propose that the manufacturing spaces and new housing will coexist. And this plan was actually signed um, and approved uh, by the director of the planning department about two months ago. Um, so this is a real pressing issue. Um, what is really needed, in our opinion, is a more serious look at how we can protect this essential community that close us by providing them with just wages and proper working conditions. Here you have a diagram from the planning department showing that um, they will only require for new construction uh, within the fashion district, they will only require one level, one floor level of new buildings that are being built here um, to be manufacturing spaces. And we believe that there will probably be loopholes to turn those manufacturing spaces into lofts um, very easily as well. Um, so why do we care about manufacturing? So while some might look at manufacturing as part of the economic past, maintaining a strong manufacturing core is actually critical for giving LA a chance to maintain its economic leadership. Manufacturers generate economic activity from a diverse array of suppliers, which in turn contributes to the health of local communities or in local economies. A strong manufacturing economy unlocks important employment and advancement opportunities. So this is a diagram here showing uh, that manufacturing uh, and residential and commercial activities as they occur on site now could actually continue coexisting with each other um, at a, with a larger percentage of manufacturing than what's being proposed. 
So the Santa Monica College Architecture students partnered with the Garment Workers Center to imagine what a healthy, sustainable fashion district can look like if the workers are given the supportive infrastructure they need. So there are some photos of our class here actually visiting some factories that are actually exemplary factories um, that have invested in their uh, workers by installing state-of-the-art air conditioning systems, um, maintaining uh, windows that are up to code and fire exits that are up to code, as well as providing uh, spaces for um, eating lunch and actually providing lunch for workers. Um, the, our studio uh, surveyed and analyzed uh, buildings currently used for garment manufacturing. So we were giving a list of buildings where, where garment workers can be found and we analyzed the buildings, um, a number of, uh, a few buildings and we uh, actually spent some time drawing the floor plans, the elevations, building physical models of them, and kind of analyzing these issues uh, dealing with daylight, ventilation, indoor uh, environmental quality, um, as well as open space and spaces of uh, respite. So with that, I'm going to let uh, Avalon from our class uh, talk about the first project. Hello. I'm Avalon. Um, so one of the things that we noticed when we were visiting um, the factories was that there wasn't a lot of natural daylight getting into some of them. If they they were, um, it was direct sunlight. So it was creating a lot of heat in the workplace. Um, so we replaced the roof on this building with a sawtooth roof um, in kind of an industrial um, type way and then created these um, industrial tubes around the windows to um, allow for plant the plants to capture carbon um, before they reach the inside of the building. Um, and then this is a render of what that space would look like. On this other building here, uh, we found that it was a, a, a taller building next to a, a, and it had a section of it that was a one story um, section. So we decided to create a solar kind of garden there, which would be a space for workers to relax during lunchtime, um, planted with uh, native plants. Um, and we created this kind of high tech um, solar uh, roof that faces the sun, as well as replacing part of the facade of the building with also um, solar cells. So again, the idea is to give these buildings kind of a new life, adaptive reuse, um, sustainably uh, bringing them into the 21st century, really. Um, so then next we also looked at um, spaces for for breaks and um, noticed that the workers didn't really have the infrastructure to, um, or the buildings didn't have the infrastructure to give workers a chance to step away from um, the workspace. And so we took the fire escape balconies on a building and enlarged them and widened them to um, traverse the whole front um, part of the building. And then we did some kind of strategic cutouts of um, parts of the building to provide green spaces um, and outdoor spaces for breaks. And then did um, some gardens down at the, the street level to just bring that into the sidewalk space. And yeah, that's a rendering. Let's go down. Hello everyone, my name is Karen. Um, for this building, we found some interiors um, acoustics. We have a solution um, for these buildings. Since we visited the buildings, um, the factories, we noticed that 100 machines are all inside one large space. Um, they all create an unhealthy sound pollution for the workers. Um, we researched cork as an acoustic material to mitigate the right reverberations. So we designed acoustic clouds that hang above each workstation. So you can see in the rendering. And the clouds are installed to complement lighting fixtures, structure, fire sprinkles, and air conditioner dots to create a healthier, better working environments. 
The next building, um, in this building, we notice the use, the underuse of live wells. So we decide um, to create with this low roof, uh, we decide that they can be landscape with native plants to create an outdoor lunch and exercise a space for all the garment workers. And on the facade of the building, we can notice the large factory windows. We notice that the large factory windows created too much heat from the workers to the, for the workers. So we design a series of fabrics and textiles that you can notice in the facade right there. Um, uh, there are patterns that we attach it to the building in order to reduce the solar heating gain. Right here, we can see that we can also can imagine the garment workers uh, taking a part of this production for the solar shades. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, we looked at a few more buildings. Uh, I'll skip ahead to this building here where uh, we, um, we noticed that there was a uh, uh, opportunity to create a second skin facade uh, for controlling uh, for controlling the heat gain as well as well as um, shading um, from the natural light um, and actually creating a space for again for rest and for a community space um, on the side of the building as well and uh, finally. Um, we think the next steps on our project are to develop um, an awareness campaign um, of these issues um, happening with the planning department and to help imagine um, what the um, district could be if it remained a manufacturing, a mostly manufacturing uh, district. So some of that will include actually translating a document like this um, into Spanish to share with uh, the garment, the members of the Garment Workers Center um, launching the campaign and hopefully meeting with the planning department uh, to discuss uh, the issues. And that's it. Wonderful. Thank you, David. And thank you, students. Wonderful work. Um, excited to see just the creative use of design and engineering to try to improve the lives of people that are making our clothes. You know, it's it, and it was beautifully presented as well. So thank you for that. Uh, I think, you know, why don't we start with Chris? Yeah, terrific. Um, thank you, David and, and team. Um, really appreciate the presentation. Um, I happened to write my master's thesis on the challenges of urban manufacturing. So very much uh, up, up my alley um, and glad to see that you're engaging with it. I think the problem statement was very well put. Um, you know, land use is a way that we express our community values. And so to protect manufacturing jobs and particularly the um, the economic mobility that they provide is important. And we have a we do have a housing crisis in Los Angeles, no, no doubt. Um, but it's much easier to preserve manufacturing uses than it is to create them anew in these urban environments. So um, I think that was very well stated. Um, some things to consider as you were describing the the projects and the characteristics of these buildings i think there's um there's one interest i think there's an interesting opportunity in, in the ways that residential uses aren't always compatible with manufacturing which is that there are impacts um such as noise and vibration which may make um, being adjacent to manufacturing neighbors not that desirable if you're a resident however does that op open up other opportunities to think about what else might be happening in the building and particularly at the ground level, right? Could there be a restaurant or a nightclub or other uses that also come with noise and vibration that might not mind being, um, you know, in that, in that same place? Um, and I, I also wonder, is there a way to sort of engage with the, with the street um, to have on the ground level uh, demonstration space or retail space that's connected to what's happening upstairs. I'm wondering if you've thought about particularly that that ground floor um, and and how you might address it. Is there a time for us to respond a little bit? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, good. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and and one thing about garment, I didn't focus. We we didn't really focus on this too much or didn't mention it, but it is like light manufacturing, right? So um, I did just keep saying manufacturing, although you know it's light manufacturing uses um, that we would try to make them compatible with uh, 
with residential and and uh right there's certain mitigations that we could do like acoustics and and definitely something that um our studio uh project is which i'd be happy to to share some some more stuff uh later um off offline um is actually designing a block which deals with commercial space residential and how those things would actually come together so it's something that we've definitely thought about it's not what what this presentation was really was really focused on um i would say that the the way we want to focus this presentation is more of imagining uh buildings uh being able to be altered in a way to bring them into the future as many and maintaining them as manufacturing buildings you know and and definitely uh the fashion district is already this kind of living ecosystem of commercial activity as i'm sure anybody that's been there it's it's a wild kind of pedestrian very unique kind of pedestrian zone uh in los angeles with a lot of um ground level activity as well as some residential uses um scattered throughout mostly artists that kind of move in for kind of live work um uses in the buildings great thanks david thanks chris Cassie, let's throw it to you and then we'll go to Steve. Sure. Um, thank you for that. That was a really beautiful presentation. And I thought it was really thoughtful the way that um, you've integrated so many different sustainability concepts into the building. Um, so my question is, how do you fund something like this? Have you thought about that? Um, have you engaged with the current manufacturers and and or the workers to help inform the design that you are talking about and um are there did they did they provide suggestions that resulted in certain pieces that you integrated um if you did engage with them already what are they looking for that's a lot a lot of questions but those are those no, are the ones that came up for me <laughs> oh no, yeah that's great questions i mean the scope of our kind of pando project right in terms of funding our pando project is really creating an awareness campaign um and it's really more on that end um to give us the ability to um, engage with the garment worker center and their members some more um, by having material translated um, and letting them really imagine um uh what this district could really be um currently i know garment workers if you were to ask them you know what would you like here they'll basically tell you you know we'd like a working toilet you know or we'd like there to not be like rats in the in the emergency exit stairs that we need to like hang out in the spaces are damp um it's really about bringing the buildings up to um a dignified like working environment um so first of all it's really that, that's what i think the pando project is about is about sparking the imagination of these garment workers um as well as engaging with the planning department which has already started um and it's a side it's a project that we're also working on um in terms of of setting up materials to speak with the planning department they uh, they created this whole plan over the course of the last four or five years and it was only in the last six months that the garment workers center caught wind of the plan um, that they were going to be kind of gentrified out of uh with the next 25 years right the zoning kind of works like that in in 20 25 year kind of time periods um and when the planning department uh the planning department was willing to meet with the garment worker center and did meet with them and that's why that one story of manufacturing was added into their plan um just in the last few months um we want there to be more um time we think that there's with the transition of the government um the city government now we think that there's an opportunity to have more meetings with them and hopefully um further revise the zoning the zoning plan so that's one thing um sorry my answer is kind of long but in terms of um who funds these actual improvements on the building um one thing that we've imagined is uh having uh garment workers move more towards a co-op um business model as opposed to currently where you have the big brands and then the contractors who are just trying to make the most amount of money um, um and basically i think a lot of us are aware of of the unjust kind of wages and practices um that garment workers have to 
have to kind of contend with um, getting paid only by peace. Um, and if the garment workers could maybe form their own kind of co-op business model and kind of cut the middleman out, um, that may be a way where um, there can be more investment um, directly, you know, from the people that are going to be using um, the, the spaces. So my suggestion in, in thinking about your campaign is to do that engagement um, of the different stakeholders that you feel like the city maybe didn't do, right? So you, you have uh, that type of material that, and evidence that you can bring to the campaign. Okay. Right. And, uh, and Steve, in the interest of time, if you just have a comment for the team, that would be great on this one. Sure, yeah, no, this, this is really, I think, interesting. And, um, you know, I saw this project now thinking about what happened in the city of LA about 10, 15 years ago when the arts district was, you know, wasn't the arts district, it was a failing manufacturing zone and they reimagined it as a green manufacturing zone, which is right next to the fashion district. Um, you know, and they were supposed to build all these great green buildings. The only thing that got built was the Lacrette Innovation Campus, where Lacey is now currently housed. Um, and gentrification ran rampant. Um, and you have this weird zone where you have, you know, party goers mi mixing in with semis, you know, uh, going through that. So I, I think, David, this was really, and your students did, are tapping on a really interesting idea of keeping manufacturing zones distinct and thinking really cohesively how these different zones interact with. Um, Sort of the other aspects that are we seeing in urban renewal. Great, great work to everyone. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, team. Great stuff.